afternoon and evening for 60 days in a row. That's far too much, but it was, that was what they did. And for 60 days, I was, work, I was working with this motley crew of very strange people. And they, they had to, uh, they were all vying with each other. Now, I hate reality TV, but if I was getting my message across that this is how you build a traditional type house, this is how you make spaces, this is how you create double height space, these are the materials you use, this is how a sun pipe works so you don't have to use light, this is wha how photovoltaic cells work. So you're giving the message all the time. You're an architect, so you're there as a role model. And luckily, I managed to get out untarnished. Um, I'm fin going to finish when I go through this, and if we have time, I've got a four-minute film on, on um, the Olympics. The Olympics, um, the Olympics is run by the IOC, International Olympic Committee. They're the ones that make money out of the Olympics. They're the ones that hold all the strings. They're the ones that said, you may not, as an architect or an engineer, tell anybody that you worked on your project in the, unless you pay me, unless you're a sponsor. And I thought this was absolutely outrageous. So, campaign, drop the ban. This is a ban, a banner. And we said, drop the ban on architects and engineers telling you, I worked on that, I worked on that. So, big campaign, lots of publicity to all of the architects. IOC were not happy. We managed to get onto the Olympic site during the Paralympics, where they don't have control. And with this bunch of people, we managed to photograph them in front of their building for posterity, for the archives, for them, um, for the public. Because otherwise, those buildings, 90% of them, were going to be taken down and nobody would ever see them or have a record of them. Thomas Heatherwick, who did The Cauldron, um, Asif Khan, The Beatbox. So I also made a film, which I'm going to show you, a four-minute promotion film that will go around the world to every British embassy. And it is promoting the landscape guys, um, the, the acoustic guy, the bridge people, make. And all of these people, I believed, deserved publicity. Um, going around the world, um, this is big Danish best art. Well, some of the some of the best architects for social housing. If we're trying to put them pr promote ourselves, we've got to compare ourselves and promote others. You've got the tallest building, or you've got the most green building that just won the other night. But whatever it is, it's the politicians. They're the ones that we've got to convince. These guys. <laughs> Tricky, eh? You use every, every influence you have. I use the Irish Embassy to meet a lot of people that I couldn't normally meet. Prince Charles has a huge effect on, on, on architecture. Not that I would always agree with it. That's all I'm going to talk about, but I want to show you a four-minute film, if we have time. Yeah, um, but it's been a pleasure talking to you all. Thank you very much. huge responsibility to try to find a way to symbolise the extraordinary thing that a, an Olympic Games is. And the symbolism of the flame was enormous. We wanted the fastest velodrome in the world, the best atmosphere, the best acoustics, and so we looked very closely at all the factors that would influence performance. You can put them up, you can take them down, you can move them, you can put them somewhere else. I think there's a real future for temporary buildings, um, particularly for the Olympics. Beatboxing is a kind of vocal percussive art. And the idea was to create a building that you can experience like a musical instrument. In fact, that you can play like a musical instrument. The whole idea of the structure was to create an indoor acoustic for outdoor performances. And it's got a really beautiful, clear sound, but also a warm sound because it reverberates within the shell before it comes out. This building, which looks like a piece of sculpture, is, is very rational and has been derived from quite a rigorous process of architect and engineer working together. We took our inspiration from the bicycle. Uh, it's the most brilliant bit of engineering. 
Um, it's so efficient, it has nothing superfluous on it. Every component is working really hard. We wrap the seats very tightly around the track and then we wrap the building very tightly around the seats. And that gave this kind of direct communication between the geometry of the track and the outside of the building. The cable net roof is a prime example. Things with two curves in both directions really allow us as structural engineers to, to maximise the efficiency out of the building. There's a fraction of the steel in that roof there is on, on a conventional roof going the same sort of distance. The brief that was set was extremely ambitious. It asked for a very exciting um, an explosive experience. To convert all of that into a building and architecture takes a lot of creative energy. It's all about focusing and creating a, a path for the sound waves out of the structure to the audience. And part of that is the peak, so the sound waves come up and reflect off it and project down onto the audience. When you use PVC or fabric structures, you need to get curvature, three-dimensional curvature into the facade to keep it nice and tight. It's these sort of arches, they were horizontal, pushing the fabric out. And we thought if we put those at various different angles, we could produce something that was quite dynamic. We had lots of repetition in the details. We minimized the number of components, but also maximized the size of assemblies so that things could be lifted into place in one go. People come from all over the world to base themselves here because of this incredible chemistry, which is to do with the way this country supports unusual forms of thinking and it makes space for people to dare to challenge ideas and test things and there are an incredible collection of institutions and places so there's a momentum that's key here. and members of the public. And I think that's, um, up right there. Hello. And I think that's, um, again, media, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, you can put up these 10 minute videos and it's like a career guidance for schools. I wanted to go onto the school's website for, for careers. And it's, it's quite easy and quite cheap to make films. I mean, that one, that one was a bit more expensive. But you know, you can make um, for 500 pounds knowing your cameraman, um, you, can make, you can make a good 10 minutes. And it's, I think it's money well spent because it goes, goes so broadly and so widely. But um, yeah, somebody must have some little question for me. <laughs> yes. Got my mic off. How much money on publications? Um, that's a good question because we publish in-house. We have, we've got Reba Enterprises, which is the business side of the RIBA, and they bring in 20 million pounds every year. 20 million. From from Reba membership, we bring in 8 million pounds, and then from other events and stuff. So it's probably 40 million. So it is a very big and very big organisation, and it's hard to compare. But we have got two big magazines that are outside of RIBA: Building Design Magazine. Um, it's uh, 58 pounds a year to buy, and the Architects Journal, and then there's Architects Review, I suppose, that's another sister paper, sister magazine. But our RIBA magazine, probably, um, I, I can't tell you how much it costs to, to, to run, but I do one page, well, not now, I'm now past president since two weeks ago. But the thing is that um, the president does one page, and it's all about latest products, latest, um, projects, interviews with architects, and what is facing our, our profession now. 
The Reba Journal goes free to all members, so our 40,000 members get a free copy of Reba Journal. For our publications, that's done by Reba Enterprise, the business side, so there's no conflict of interest there. Um, but the publications that we do, um, how to use BIM, build, Building Information Technology, which the government say we all have to learn by next year. Um, but don't be scared off by BIM. We're mostly already doing at least two of the five stages. It's just a, pr it's a, it's a process. It's the process of how you work. Um, um, things like um, how, to, how to do green, eco-friendly, eco sustainable design, passive house design. They're, we call them um, um, uh, tools or guidance or kit of parts. And it's telling our members how to do it. We also have to do um, 34 hours of CPD, continuing professional development. That's 34 hours. So every week, for example, in our office, we get somebody in about a product, whether it be, um, I don't know, new solar panels or a brick or whatever it is. And we learn, you're always learning. And that's what architects do. You know, when you leave college, it's only the start of the learning process. So CPD, and you have to put it on the website of the RIBA. I did this one from the brick manufacturer, one hour. And then it's all added up. And you won't get your registration that year unless you do, because it's mandatory. Every architect that's registered must do CPD, which is great, because we're learning. Um, you do it too. Um, but on the, on the, on the magazines, um, the, the building design is, the, um, is like the, the, the sun or the news of the world. It's the, the um, I don't know what you call it, the cheap, the cheap version. The one that, the gossip, all the gossip. Um, and then the AJ is more serious because that does, I'm sure you get AJ here. And then we keep an archive of all the printed and public, public um, publicized material. And then everything goes up on architecture.com is our website. It's, it's just about to be redone at the cost of 40,000 pounds. Um, but the, our website um, is huge. It's a fund of knowledge. You can all tap into it for free. You can pick up a lot of these publications for free. They're downloading as a PDF and you can print them off or read them online. So it's, it, we share this knowledge. And I think that's one of the important things as architects. We're not in competition. We're not in competition with Croatian architects or it Italian architects. We as architects need to lead. We used to lead. We need to lead again. And this is why we need to stick together, learn from each other, get out there and campaign, convince your politicians of a better way of doing things. And if they want to be voted in again, they've got to do it. Thanks. Evo, velika hvala gospođi Brady na ovom uh, predavanju. Uh, pauza je za uh, kao nekakvih 30 minuta, budući da je ovo bilo posljednje predavanje na engleskom, molimo vas da vratite ove slušalice, jer je jučer dvoje ljudi to zaboravilo napraviti, ako su vam ostale negdje u torbi, evo, zamolili su vas tamo da, da to odradimo. Uh, tijekom tih 30 minuta, uh, naravno, možete, ako još uvijek niste pogledati uh, izložbu ovdje otraga, uh, projekti sanacije, željeni i oni koji su već odrađeni. Kad se vratimo posljednji okrugli stol, arhitektura teritorija, planiranje hrvatskog krajobraza i na kraju zaključci kongresa. Vidimo se dakle u 11.45.